Hello Matrix and welcome to the eighth video on statistics brought to you by the answer series. In this video we will continue looking at exam questions. Example number one. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we'll do it together. The first question is to identify an outlier in the data. It's that point over there because it's far away from all the others, so the outlier is the point 100, 100. The next question is to calculate the equation of the least squares regression line. Use your calculator, get the value of A and the value of B, and then put them into the equation Y equals A plus BX. 1.3, they ask you to predict the value of the client's sales if he spent 240 hours with him. So I take the equation I've just got, make x equal to 240, and get the value of y. And then remember that these sales are in thousands of rands, so I need to get it in thousands of rands. 1.4, what is the expected increase in sales for each additional hour spent with the client? Now that is simply asking you, what is the gradient of the least squares regression line? Because the gradient is the value of the sales per hour. Your gradient is 2,91, so the expected increase is 2,910 rand. Example number two. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we'll do it together. The first question is to calculate the mean. Add up all the values, divide by 10 and you get the mean. The standard deviation, use your calculator and you get it there. They then ask you how many days is the number of units of blood donated at the college outside one standard deviation from the mean. So I take the mean minus the standard deviation. I take the mean plus the standard deviation. And then I have a look at my data. 61.17 fits in there. 98.83 fits in there. How many days are outside that, there are two below, there are three above, in other words, five days in total. Two point two point one asks you to describe the skewness of the data. You will notice the box and whisker diagram is far more spread to the left, so it is skewed to the left. The values of A and B a is the lower quartile, B is the upper quartile. I have 10 sets of data, so my median is in the middle. So to get the lower quartile, I take the data that is below the median, and I take the median of that. So I get that A is 65. To get the upper quartile, I take the data that is above the median, the median of that is 99, so B's value is 99. 2.3, it was discovered that there was an error in counting the number of units of blood each day. The correct mean of the data is 95. How many units of blood were not counted? So if the mean is 95, it means the total should have been 95 times 10, which is 950. But if we add all the data together, we only get 800. So how many were not counted? 950 minus 800, in other words, 150. Example number three. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself, and then we'll do it together. 3.1. How many learners visited the tuck shop? Well, if I take my top value, it's 65. 
3.2, write down the modal class. The modal class is the one that has the highest frequency, so it's the one which has the biggest gap. So it's there. So it's from 30 to 40. 3.3 asks you for the values of A and B. A is the number of people who fit into the first interval. So into the first interval, I go from 0 to 12, so A is 12. B is the number of people who fit into the interval 40 to 50. So I go from 45 to 61. In other words, B is 16. They then ask you in 3.4 to use the ogive to determine the number of learners who spent at least 45 rand. So with the ruler, I go up from 45 and I go across. You get approximately 55. Now how many spent at least 45 means I want this section of the graph. So it's 65 minus the 55 that I read off. In other words, 10 learners. Example number four. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we will do it together. 4.1 comment on the skewness. You will notice it's more spread to the left, so the data is skewed to the left. 4.2, the range of the marks. The highest mark is 80, the lowest mark is 20, so there I have the range. 4.3, if the learners had to obtain 32 marks to pass the test, estimate the percentage of the class that failed the test. Well, there's my 32. That is the lower quartile. So the people who failed fit into this quartile. Remember, a quartile is 25%. So what percentage were below 32? 25%. The last question says to you, in ascending order, the second mark is 28, the third mark is 36, and the sixth mark is 69. They tell you that the 7th and the 8th marks are the same and the average mark for the test is 54. And we need to fill in the marks of the remaining learners in ascending order. The smallest value is 20. The median is 62. The biggest value is 80. So I now have they gave me these values and I've been able to fill in the 20, the 62 and the 80. They have told me that the upper quartile is 75. Now the upper quartile is going to be between these two values. So between these two values is 75. But they said to me that the 7th and the 8th values must be the same. In other words, they must both be 75. The last piece of information they give me is that the mean is 54. So the total of the nine marks must be 486. Add up the values we have already and you will realize that that fourth mark has to be 41. And there are the nine numbers. You should now feel more confident answering exam questions. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.